Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Uh, before I give my brief teaching, I would like to thank everyone um, and let you know how much pleasure it has been for me to be a guide through the Parshiot these last however many months they've been. And now as we come to the end of the Torah, this is the final Parsha. I just wanted to reach out and tell you what an amazing experience it's been with me. And I appreciate all of you going on this wonderful journey. And I hope to see you. It's a never ending journey. Just as we end the Torah, we begin it again. In fact, if um, if you do go to a uh, Simcha's Torah celebration, you know that you don't just read the end Parsha, the Zot HaBracha, without immediately beginning Breshit. So it's a never-ending study, and I appreciate you being on this journey for me. Um, Vizot HaBracha means this is the blessing. These are Moshe's last words to the tribes and to the people. So you expect him to, first of all, give what we think of as a blessing, whatever that may be. For me, the paradigmatic blessing is the priestly blessing, and that is something that contains words like blessing you and guarding over you, shining light on you. Uh, but what we read, and if you're a careful reader of the Parsha, and it's only a page and a half, so I recommend that everybody read it. What you read doesn't really sound like a blessing. Each tribe is singled out. Uh, Shimon is omitted. Um, each tribe is singled out, and it sounds more like words of description about what the tribes are about what their strengths and weaknesses are. Um, some of the descriptions are one sentence and very neutral. Others sound almost like a rebuke. And there's a small handful that are extensive and sound like words of praise. So every year when I read it, the first question that comes to me is, why are these called blessings? Because they don't really sound like blessings. And um, it occurred to me that the reason why they are blessings is because one of the greatest gifts that we can give to another human being is to illuminate for them, and I'll just use words from uh, Shanti's poem, shine a light on that part of their personality or character or actually when you glimpse their soul and enable them to see that themselves. Very often we can see things in other people, but we're blind to what's going on with ourselves. So what is Moshe doing here? He's giving descriptions to the tribes of what their strengths and weaknesses are and, um, and really shining a light on how they can know therefore how to be, what to improve on, what to concentrate on, and um, and how they should combine with other tribes that can perhaps complement them and supplement whatever it is that they need help with. So that perhaps is the biggest blessing that we can get from another person, for them to shine a bright light on us, reveal our souls to ourselves, and in that way, give us a roadmap to what our potential is and help us to realize that. So, for example, in this last parsha, Moshe is referred to as Ish Elohim, a, a man of God. And to me, along with this theme that I just laid out for you, this Ish Elohim is something that enables one to realize the God-given potential. And Moshe, out of everyone, is someone who has realized his potential. He's come as close to anyone as being a projection of what it means to be B'Tselem Elohim in the image of God. So if the greatest gift that we can give to ourselves and to others is self-understanding and insight, um, then we can move towards this goal of realizing our potential and being the best version of ourselves that we can be. Obviously, it's a work in progress. We ask at the uh, Sea of Reeds, we ask God who is like you when we're singing joyously after we are able to cross the sea and we see the Egyptians behind us unable to overtake us. We say, who is like you? Micha Mocha. Now in our Parsha here, Moshe is saying to each one of us, 
who is like you, emphasizing our uniqueness so that we can maximize our strengths and improve our, our weaknesses. That reminded me of a wonderful little story that Martin Buber tells in his stories of the Hasidim. Rabbi Finley has talked about this book many times. It contains lots of little, uh, some of them are only one sentence, such as the one I'm going to read to you now. Little koans, little paragraphs, um, wonderful little parables that have great wisdom, lots of humor and um, important lessons. So here it is. It's called The Query of Queries, and it is a little story about Reb Zusia of Hannipal, who was a Hasidic Rebbe uh, in the 18th century. Before his death, Rabbi Zusia said, in the coming world, they will not ask me, why were you not Moses? They will ask me, why were you not Zusia? So I hope for all of us with the transformative process that we just went through for Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, that we can each have a light shined on ourselves to discover what it is about our soul and our essence that we want to take out and cherish and shine into the world and that we can in turn become the best or at least a better version of ourselves this year. Shabbat Shalom.